Welcome to the Life Success and Legacy Podcast. We're glad you're here, and we hope you enjoy the episode. Hey, everybody, we want to welcome you back to this episode of the Life Success Legacy Podcast. I've got three mics. Any of you guys watch the uh, the voice? I do. I've got an idea. Since we've got so many mics, you know how Snoop is calling Michael Buble Mikey? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we've got <laughs> Michael Crawford, Mike Kwong, and we're going to start calling Mike Everett Mikey. Mikey. <laughs> Mike. He is oh my Mikey. gosh, Mikey! Real that quick. just sounds Mikey. so disrespectful Mikey. to your elder. <laughs> that so, sounds so disrespectful. D- just to your, your initials, Mikey. There. No, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, my, my brother and sister, my brother and sister did that. Yeah, and you don't want to know scarred. what I called. Yeah, you don't want to know what I called them. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown and matured since then. <laughs> hey, Mike Everett. Yes, sir. There's this there's this little phrase that we kick around from time to time. And, and it's one of those things when like it's not on our, you know, why we exist or anything like that. It's just as kind of the it's woven into the fabric as to how yep. we function at life, success and legacy. <clears throat> and um, that phrase is, <clears throat> excuse me having skin in the game. Mm. Um, When I think about when you and I started out, um, we were going around to different events, uh, a lot of chiropractic, continuing education events, doctor events, eye doctors, dentists, et cetera. (laughs) And we'd always take a stack of books, right? But did we give those books away? We did not. And that's because we were trying to support our families on $20 books, right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's the phrase, not that's at all. The phrase that I always loved the most is, you know, whenever it would talk to somebody about one of those books and I was just learning IDC, I'm at these chiropractic conventions and there's, you know, tables getting adjusted, there's sleep number beds over in the corner, there's somebody selling some vitamins down the way. And here Mike is standing out there with the black book, waving it around. <laughs> and they're like, how much is it? And he's like, 20 bucks. And he goes, we feed our family off of this. No, I'm just joking. We don't. <laughs> Everett, why, where did you come up with the idea of not giving books away and actually well, charging people? Where, where did that idea come from? Well, uh, this happened in the first six months of me learning about IBC. I remember my very first time to go to Birmingham, Alabama. And it was our, and believe it or not, they actually called them a think tank back then, just like they do now. Mm -hmm. But my very first think tank was in February of 2006. And there were 45 of us. (laughs) There was, there was literally 45 of us. And I remember Nelson, the entire two day event was all about Nelson doing his 10 hour seminar. Mm -hmm. And I would say at least once, if not two or three times during the two days, he would always talk about his book and the fact that you don't give it away. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that, that made me pause for a second because I was going, dude, we, we just want to talk to as many people as we possibly can. But he actually called it skin in the game. Mm -hmm. He says, if people will purchase the book, more than likely they'll, they'll read it. And that is their skin in the game. But as you all know, Mike Everett kind of takes the, uh, the quick lane that let's let's do the quick start as fast as we can. I remember I had a case of books and I thought, I am Mike Everett. I will show everybody exactly how this goes. So this is back when they had 65 books in a case. And for I'm gonna tell you for 10 and a half months, I gave away. of those 65 books. 
you know how many policies I wrote? Zero. You say not one. And then when it dawned on me that the skin in the game thing was for real, I sold my first book, my first purchasing IBC client, bought the book, read the book, and called me and became a client. <laughs> and I thought, Holy oh my gosh, there was something to this all the time. I thought, you know, I thought this right here would be able to just give these books away. And <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. see those three guys, they just kind of chuckled because they know how I am. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it, it's amazing how once you experience the reality of some of the truths that Nelson shared, as something as simple as selling the book, it it you embrace it, but you lock it in the back of the CPU in your brain mm-hmm. and you go, golly, this works. Yeah. You know, Everett, listening to you tell that story, you could almost replace charging someone $20 for the book with the concept of making policy loan repayments. You could. It, it's, it, it's listening to you. It's all it, it. They both struck you almost the same way in hearing you tell those stories. I, I'm telling you. In fact, uh, there was the, the correlation between the two is is unbelievable. But um, it, it's it's amazing that if you if you literally show somebody that they need to have some skin in the game, they truly will read the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm still guilty, by the way, I'm still super guilty about maybe giving a book away every now and then or circumventing the process a little bit. And, you know, as well as I do, all of us know this, the people who go through the process, 85% of them say, hey, yeah, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And so LSL, our team. The Mike's and Chris, (laughs) we really believe that if somebody is going to grow, if they're going to learn, if they are going to educate themselves about the infinite banking concept, they truly need to get a copy of the book and they need to pay the $20 for it and move on because that's truly, you know, and one of the stories after I kind of became a little bit uh, semi-smart about it, I'd go, uh, (laughs) somebody would go, well, what? why do I need to get a copy of the book? I go, well, Hey, did you go to college? Well, yeah. And let's say you went to psychology 101 first day and the professor goes, Hey, you know what? On Wednesday, we're going to have a test on chapters one, two, and three. Now, if you didn't go get the book at the bookstore and read chapters one, two, and three, how'd you do on the test on Wednesday? That's just college. We're talking about, real life here and what we teach is success in life it just so happens that we leave a legacy but we're teaching people success in life and really uh, chris you've even said this hundreds if not thousands of times cash flow is always a barrier cash is a barrier Mm -hmm. so if debt is just chasing us everywhere there's a way in which we can show you how to navigate that whole thing and it just so happens to be with the 92 page book pretty simple yeah i love how um the concept how nelson used the concept of skin in the game and i think that concept can be applied in lots of different ways Um, we already talked about you know making policy loan repayments uh, that's being an honest banker, right? That's that's yep. don't don't steal the peas. That is an example of having skin in the game. There's other examples. I even remember reading about Warren Buffett and his very first fund that he started. He invested in it. He put his own hard earned hard earned money into his own fund, right? And, and so he had skin in the game. We've even, uh, we could probably give examples of, of skin in the game when we're raising our kids and those kinds of things. Mike Kwong, yeah. 
you mentioned something about like there's it, it's not necessarily like the twenty dollars for the book. Oh, that, yeah, no, for sure. And and so far we've mentioned that right. Um, Warren Buffett's capital he invested the twenty dollars for a book. I would submit that for me, um, it goes back to something else that Warren you know Buffett kind of mentioned was the best investment that you can make in yourself or 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 you know is in yourself first. Mm -hmm. What he meant by that is in education and learning. And, and we as a team, you know, we're all teachers and um, that's what Nelson, you know, kind of modeled for us to do. And, and, but that takes an investment in your time. So mm -hmm. I would say that, you know, skin in the game, and this could be more important in my opinion with mm -hmm. all the people I talk to uh, is it means meeting us, you know, somewhere halfway, right? Don't expect that you're going to get this if, if we're the only ones, you know, that are engaging you or, or doing all the talking, for example. Mm -hmm. It really helps for everyone when when the person, you know, has done their homework. Let's put it that way. It's not just getting the book. You got to read it. Right. I, I, I told Pay, it's like, you know, this book I wrote took me two years. All I ask is two days of your time to just read it. Yeah. Right? Good deal. <laughs> Actually, I, two yeah. hours. Yeah. You can read that in two hours. Yeah. yeah. So. so yeah, I mean, skin in the game also, in my opinion, means putting the time in, you know, asking yeah. the questions, right? Uh, and, and getting, you know, that information actively, because that's the only and the best way that you're going to succeed and get something out of it, because anyone can write you a policy. But I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to dovetail on top of that, because I, I tell, I, I actually share this in the webinar that we do on Mondays. You know, our skin in the game is think tanks and masterminds and webinars and boot camps. We're continuing to learn. N not only are we, uh, I'm pulling them all up. We're, we're all continuing to read and educate and learn ourselves because if we're not learning, our clients are not learning. Well, and I'll, I'll add to it. You know, one of the things that we have said, and I can't remember if it's Chris or Everett or both, um, during boot camps, sometimes I think even webinars, Mike, you've said this, um, you know, the book takes you a couple hours to read Nelson's book, right? Let's just say two, three hours uh, if you're stopping to make highlights. Okay. And um, that's the beginning. That's the, that's your first two hours. You're probably into IBC education for at least 10 hours if you're doing it right. And we're meeting you there too. We're putting the time in on the other side of it, whether that's just additional education on our side, coaching you, helping you as the client get your um, your system off the ground, the meetings we have about your strategies, you know, all of the things that we're doing on the other side of you educating yourself as the client, we're meeting mm. you in, the, in that same way. We're putting in the time as well. And so in an effort to, you know, kind of meet in the middle as, as Kwong said is, you know, there's a multitude of things that go into it. It's not just the book. It's that educational factor that comes when and after, during and after you read the book, there's, there's, there are follow-up steps. And we've talked about that in other podcasts, but it's an important aspect of having skin in the game. I had a, an interesting conversation just yesterday. I was doing a strategy presentation <clears throat> and this couple have teenage children they have three teenage children and they really love the idea of family banking but they had a hang up they didn't feel like it was moral to charge their children interest <laughs> and so it really evolved into a really fantastic conversation and a thinking exercise right mm -hmm. because um, we talked about that, you know, if they went to the bank, would they be charged interest? Yes, of course. Well, this is the family bank. So we're teaching them how the concept of banking. And I think skin in the game applies here because if it's an opportunity to teach that child that, yes, you're going to have some skin in the game by being charged interest, but where is that interest going? Mm -hmm. Isn't that going back to the family bank? Isn't that economic value added? Yeah. And if there's more going into the family bank, doesn't that mean that there's more for them to turn around and borrow the next time? Yep. And ultimately, where is that family bank when there is a death benefit payout? Where is that going to go to? 
back into the system. big pool back to the family system right to those yep. to those kids so it, you could see the wheels in the brain shifting the you mm -hmm. know, you talk about the ruts right yeah. And and it and it came from their life experience of well our our parents always gave gave us gifts at Christmas or at different mm -hmm. times right they always gifted us money but I my own personal experience and, and I'm sure all of us have experiences either for ourselves or with others like when I went to college my parents didn't pay for everything they said hey and it actually caused me to have to do some math and think <laughs> right. They said, hey, we'll either pay for your tuition or we'll pay for your living expenses. You decide. Well, how am I going to figure that out? Mm -hmm. You know, as a teenager going into college, well, I've yeah. got to actually do some research and think about it to make a decision. So there was wisdom on my parents' part mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. I think about with our kids, you know, how many times do we, when our kids are teenagers and they're young and we're just doling out money so they can go to Noodles and Company with their friends, right? <laughs> Well, I, I was inspired by the book, What Would the Rockefellers Do? And we created a menu of learning opportunities or activities that our kids could do that we would pay them for. And that's how they would get their money. Before they could actually go and get a job, we would pay them to do or to learn things. So did they have to have some skin in the game to get that money to go to Noodles and Company? Yeah. And yep we were able to influence their learning and their thinking in the direction that we wanted to by giving that money. Can you guys think of examples in your own life where either you did or did not have skin in the game or your kids did or did not have skin in the game and how that played out? Yeah. Um, I can actually relate back to the college example. Um, when I went to school, the first year, the first semester, my parents paid for everything because it was brand new. I was taking some high level courses. I was going to run track at KU, which I didn't end up doing that semester. I waited. Um, and so they offered to pay for um, the first full semester. But then after that, um, they gave me a set amount that I could divvy up however I chose. Um, and to your point, Chris, I had to do some math <laughs> and figure out like what <laughs> the best use of those dollars was going to be. But <clears throat> in my fraternity, I had buddies who were basically just on their parents dime and mm. the level of focus that the three or four of us that were really close that all had the similar background of like our parents were paying for a portion but not all um of our education our dedication to better grades if you will or or being more studious was different than those and then a lot of those who didn't have to work for any of it, who didn't have any skin in the game. And I remember clocking that as, as a, you know, 19, 18 year old going, ah, okay. I see why my parents did this. It wasn't to punish me. Cause at first I felt like it was like everybody else was getting their school paid for. Um, right. but then I realized that no, no, they're not doing it that way. They're saying, Hey, you earn it and it will be more valuable to you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And I'll add to that college experience too. I mean, I had to do work study, right. While, while you're in school. Mm. So I'm working in the cafeteria. I did some catering. I drove like the shuttle, you know, university shuttle. And when you realize it's like, this is why, so that I can afford the classes that I'm going to be going to this afternoon or whatever mm -hmm. it was. Um, it put it in a whole new light as far as like, you know, how valuable the experience is. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's again, it's not just you know the money that I'm responsible for, but now I got to work for this money too, just so <laughs> that I can go to class and then study some more and work more. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. The, there's wow. also I know we talked about this off offline, but um, my wife and I um, have paid for a trainer to help us, mm -hmm. and and I liken that to the IBC coaching, right? Um, you, you you might be able to figure out IBC on your own, but you also, you know, uh, might not be quite as diligent if you don't have that coaching session coming up or yeah. you might, might not uh, get in shape quite so quick. you might. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you might injure yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the reason that we oh. pay for a trainer and I feel privileged to be able to do that, but you know, in my fifties, it's an important thing to take care of myself. And, um, part of that, that paying for the trainer is that I'm more likely to show up. Yeah. You know, 
and I'm and I'm going to get something more out of it than Mike Kwong. You talked about New Year's resolutions, right? Oh yeah. What's what's the number one resolution? Get in shape, lose some weight. You know, get to the gym, right? And uh, you know, if it's a expensive gym, you're gonna make sure you go because otherwise, you know, you see that bill every month. You're like, ah oh, man, I only went once. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> what or not none right yeah no it's an accountability is a big thing too i'll liken it to the workout i go to i work out um three or four days a week with a couple of friends and honestly i don't know that i would be as diligent if i didn't have their accountability mm -hmm. and i see us coaches as accountability in the side you know to parallel that and so you know we are we are helping our clients be accountable as they go through their IBC journey, right? You know, sessions, being available, Discord, YouTube, you know, you know, our podcast, like everything we try to do, not perfectly, but in our own efforts, right? We are doing our best to give them the accountability that helps them succeed or keeps them accountable for how they want to go through their IBC journey. And, and again, you know, the gym for me is like that. You know, I work out with my friends. And to me, that is an accountability. I don't want to not show up and let them down, you know, just as much as I don't want to pay the bill and not show up either, you know? So, I mean, it's kind of a, a, a give and take, but. <laughs> you know, the very first sentence in the book is becoming your own banker. The infinite banking concept is a text for a 10 hour course of instruction about the power of dividend paying whole life insurance. Well, what in the world is that 10 hours? Mm -hmm. It's, reading the book it's doing the dream conversation it's doing the webinar the boot camps it's it's you doing all the research it's you asking questions and us answering it's really uh it, it is a multifaceted thought process but yet we are all involved and we always say this that if somebody will meet us halfway we will we will do everything in our power to give them the knowledge and the education and the learning that they want, because not every client is the same. Everybody asks different questions, but they're all surrounded by what really is IBC and what's it all about and how will it work for me? Well, isn't that the value of our boot camps and stuff like that is like, you know, we oh. encourage clients who are clients, like been here for a while and are doing well, right? We encourage yeah. them to show up to these boot camps and these events and on our dibs, you know, or tips, sorry, our discord channel and, you know, dibs too. Sure. Um, you know, uh, we, we ask them to get engaged with those because their knowledge and wisdom of experience and going through the trenches in the beginning, right. Because we all kind of go through that initial phase of this is a mind bender, um, you know, <laughs> and, they're they're valuable because they think of questions that we maybe hadn't or they give insights that we hadn't considered and that's all part of us learning as well and it helps those clients and those those potential clients who are you know still in that education process just find and formulate more information to to make an informed decision i'll give an example just this week i had a text conversation with our friend ron ron swall and um do you guys would you say that Ron has done his meet us 50% of the way? Yeah. <laughs> more than that. Yeah, more than that. Like 150%. The guy oh, yeah, cannot yeah. stop. I, yeah. I've told him, to catch him, Ron, seek help. <laughs> 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 he cannot stop thinking about IBC and his system and things like that. So, uh, but anyway, he shot me a question. And I responded, he had it slightly off and it was, had to do with the PUA and keeping it in force and the flexibility of the PUA, that whole thing. And, um, and he, and he, in his response, after I responded and gave him the answer, he said, how in the world did I miss that? Like it, you know, it was one of those basic mm -hmm. things that we teach in boot camps and those kinds of things, but it just takes that ongoing conversation, yeah. the ongoing learning. Even us, we're constantly learning uh, yeah. all the time. So, so when we talk about we want our clients to meet us halfway, and I always use a visual, right? Like if this is us and this is the potential client, we, we don't want to do this. Mm -mm. 
And what we found when we do that and we're like dragging them, mm. they will not value what IBC has to offer when they haven't put their own skin in the game. Right. And it won't become a part of their life. Nope. It will, mm-hmm. it, 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 we've just seen it time and time again. And so a, a little initial start to that is we charge for the book, oh right? God. We can give the books away, but we charge 20 bucks or whatever for the mm-hmm. book. We go ahead. But let's, a hey, let, let's not, let's not miss the fact that if somebody will take the time to buy the book and go through our process and at the end of the day, one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to go, let's go. Or they're going to go, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. If this is not for them. And I hope everybody listening to this will grasp what I'm getting ready to say. We will give you back your $20 for the cost of the book and let you keep the book. We will also donate $100 to your favorite church or charity. And we're still going to go on. We're going to high five or fist bump and we're going to call it a day. We do not want to rope people in Mm -mm. to become clients at Life Success and Legacy because we know what this is going to do for people. They don't. But if they take the time and the education to learn about it, they're going to go. It's just like Ron Swall. Are all the lights on in his head? Yes. He knows what this is doing for his family. But he learned along the way and invested time and energy and learning and education. And it was like, boom, that's what we want to happen for everybody. But everybody has their own timeline. And, and I'll also add too. you know, we talked a lot about the book, which is important and great if you have the time and, the, you know, the wherewithal to, to start there. But we also have, you know, our countless podcasts and videos. And, oh, yeah. Know, never a paywall. OK, this is stuff that's priceless right you think about what what the cost is you know cost versus value we've had that conversation yeah but i've heard see people say like free has no value mm-hmm. okay but free and priceless oh wow what a difference yeah. in that you know um, if there's no cost or price to it doesn't mean it doesn't have value right and, and skin in the game does not have to be monetary mm-hmm. That's we're, right. we're asking people for their skin in the game to be time and thought yep. Thought. And that effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really what it is. We the twenty dollars for the book, as an example, it's not the twenty dollars. It is it's not. We want you to read the book and be invested <laughs> in the learning process. Do you think? Do you think like this is just popped into my head? I, I'm starting to think that the twenty dollars is is like a trigger, right? It is a. It reminds me of my nine year old when he wants to buy a toy at Target, and he says, "Ooh, I like this twenty dollar toy." And I say, okay, we have bought you some stuff, you know, we've given you what you want. But in this case, I think that this toy, if you want it, you have to pay half. Use your own money. He has birthday money, you know, Christmas Mm -hmm. money, you know, picked up sticks in the yard money, whatever it is. And I can say to him, okay, you owe us $10 tax aside, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You owe us half. And he says, ah, that triggers his brain to go, hmm is this value worth my money? Is this you know, toy worth the value of this $10? Mm-hmm. And you can see his little brain kind of like working, like you were saying, you know, with the client you were talking to, Chris, like where he's like, hmm, is it though? And sometimes it is, yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's, no, I'll wait, maybe I'll find something better. Okay, cool. You just put your money to work mentally. And that's what we're asking clients to do when we say, hey, $20 for this book, $20, I'm not saying it's nothing, but obviously it's nothing in the big scheme of like dollar amounts. And right. we're really just saying, hey, we want your brain to flip just a skosh so that you engage with the book, read the book, and then take those next steps to meet us halfway. I, th- I think in many of the examples that we've <laughs> talked about, there's a, a common thread that goes through all of this. And it in all of it, it is engaging the brain. Yeah, yeah. All of this is we want people not to be, because as an educator, I did the 403B. How often did I have to engage my brain in that? Yeah. They pulled it out of my paycheck. I didn't even yep. know what it was invested in. Yep. Mm-hmm. I had no mental connection <laughs> with right. my 403B at all. 
that's funny. I just had that same exact conversation with a potential client in the last week. And we mm-hmm. spent, you, you talk about having those text conversations with different people. Yeah. The text messages were this long. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were this long. <clears throat> and I thought, you know, I, I felt like at one point in time I was spoon feeding mm-hmm. and there was no, there was no reciprocation. Yes. But then all of a sudden, like three or four days later, because I was honest with him and said, let me tell you what, go to page so-and-so. You need to read this particular section, da 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 And then all of a sudden, about three days later, he said, dude, I probably should have done this on the front end. Yeah. I said, I, you know, because now all of a sudden he's starting to talk about different sizes of policies and yeah. how he's going to utilize them and this and that. And I go, you're getting it. You're yeah. getting it. Yeah. It's lighting the fuse. We're just lighting the fuse. That's it. All right. Well, clearly we have some thoughts and feelings around skin in the game because we just talked. I don't know how long we talked for this 40 minutes or 30, so. 30 minutes. Concept. We probably could have wrapped this for our poor listeners. We probably could have wrapped it up in about five minutes, but, but <laughs> it, just, it, it, it demonstrates how much we value oh, the, man. the concept of having skin in the game and why we it. go about things the way we do. Um, we are very, as we've said, we're very relational and educational. We are not transactional. Uh, if we were transactional, we wouldn't care about skin in the game. No, no. All right, gentlemen, Michael, Mike and Mike E. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for your time, your thoughts and, and all the, uh, the knowledge that you guys share to our listeners. Thanks again for joining us. We always appreciate um, comments or suggestions. Um, If you have a question that you would love for us to research and discuss, let us know. Uh, We'd be happy to do that. We're getting ready to do another boot camp coming up, uh, depending on when this releases. And that those boot camps oftentimes are the fuel of our podcast. Mm. Because the second part of our boot camp is all Q&A. And we try to, to flag those questions that come through that we're like, hey, that would be a really good one for the podcast. So yep. Yep. check us out at our at our website, lifesuccesslegacy.com. You can click on the top bar. There's learning events. And you can see when an upcoming webinar is coming up. Uh, click on that webinar to get the Mike experience, <laughs> the Mike Everett experience. The Mike E. Mike E experience. And then um, we recommend doing the webinar before you do the boot camp. And somewhere in there, put some skin in the game, do some there reading, you listen to some podcasts. You will serve yourself better by doing that. Yeah. We'll catch you next time at the, on the next episode of the Life Success Legacy Podcast. Thanks thank again you, thank for you. joining us.